couch with Sophia. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. She's my couch cat. She loves to sit here on the couch. Yes, she does. Um, I am going to bobinate today because I have a, a project that I'm working on. Well, first of all, I will show you um, the stitch along the um, the you know the one adventure awaits that's it stitch along tag or er, tag oh my god uh, we're in month four now so I've done this little section down here and then there's this little building. Basically, we're doing um, Australia right now, and that's going to be over here. So there's going to be some... There's a cute dolphin that goes here, and that Sydney um, Opera House, I think it is. It's that, that thing that you think of, that white doodad that you think of when you think of Sydney, Australia. And yeah, so it's it's coming along. So it looks like the rest is going to be right here. And that's probably going to be, I assume the Americas will be here. So yeah, that's coming along. Coming along great. But when I inevitably finish that in a couple days, because it's a small... It's a, it's a small installment. Um, I have another project to start that. But I'm going to start this brain. Isn't this neat? It's a relatively realistic brain. Um, but it's got the colorful one side and the kind of grayscale opposite hemisphere. Isn't that neat? It's by Awesome Pattern Studio on Etsy. They do really good patterns. This It just looks crunkly and yucky because I, um, unfortunately, it became a coaster for a little while. Um, but yeah, Awesome Pattern Studio on Etsy. Uh, the design is going to be uh, in inches, 5.71 by 6.93 inches or 120 by 120 stitches so yeah I got all the colors for it so that's what I'm gonna be bobbinating for today uh, went to Michael's yesterday and got to stitch this on I thought I would try something a little different. Uh, I have a tube of DMC. Um, maybe some of you can help me with this. It's called Monaco, trademarked, the, the name Monaco. But down here it says Evenweave, and then under that it says Lugana. It's 28 count. So, is because I've heard people s refer to different cross stitch fabrics by those names as though they are all different. If you can hear rumbling, it's because this kitty here is purring. You're so sweet. Oh gosh. I'm such a cat lady. I love my girl. Well, I love all my kitty cats, but. Soph and I are special friends. Anyway, yeah, it's a tube of Evenweave or Monaco or whatever it's called. It's uh, 
20 by 24 inches. It's one of, you know, these tubes. So I'd be uh, interested to learn to, uh, I'm interested to try it. It was inexpensive. I got it with one of those, of course, one of those 40% off coupons that they always have at Michael's. Uh, it was like, for 40% off, it worked out to be about $5 for it. Uh, and... I got a whole bunch of floss colors. So, for all the floss and the um, linen, or even weave, or whatever, and a couple more of these rings, because I like using these, I was able to kit up this project for, with my coupon and all that, I got it for $25.82, which isn't too bad, because there's a lot of colors. So, I know that, you know, projects can cost a whole lot of money to kit up, but this one is, is pretty okay, so I'm happy about that. So, off we go. <laughs> I've got, um, got some bobbins. These are just paper ones. I wish they were plastic, but I don't have any plastic ones left. And my local needle shop only had paper ones last time I was there, so there you go. Um, so you don't have to listen to me babble. I have a tag on my phone. Um, it's called the birthday tag, even though it's not my birthday. Um, I thought I would answer it because it's fun. Um, do I go by a nickname? N not really. Um, let's see. I mean, my 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 Italian family um, all call me uh, Daniela usually because. Um, it's the feminine version of, of Danielle. Um, cause Danielle, to them, Danielle is, um, like Daniel to us. So, it feels weird for them to call me Danielle because that's a boy's name. <laughs> and that's the closest thing I've ever had to a, like, a nickname. Uh... <laughs> funny when driving do you listen to CDs tapes the radio or nothing um, my car doesn't have a tape deck so I can't listen to tapes even if I wanted to uh, the last car I had had a tape deck in it but it was old <laughs> it was an old car um, Usually when I'm in there, um, it depends who's been driving last. If my husband was driving, it's probably the radio. Um, if... You know what? I'm going to move this over here. I need to have my garbage next to me so that I can throw out the uh, extra labels. Um... Anyway, my husband often listens to the radio. He likes talk radio. Super boring. Don't like talk radio. But, um, he does, so he listens to that if he's been using the car. Um, if he's been, um, driving our daughter around he usually puts on there's like one cd that's ever that's always in there and it's uh katie perry witness um the witness album so they always jam to that it's really cute <laughs> father and daughter listening to Katy perry uh i listen to i have spotify premium so i have um Playlists that I download. 
um, from Spotify. And I listen to that. So it doesn't eat up my data or anything, but I listen to that because the car has Bluetooth. So I just connect my phone that way and listen to that, which is great because I can download different playlists all the time and get different stuff. So it's good stuff. Um, are you a window person or an aisle person? Oh my gosh. Um, it's been a while since I've ridden the bus or an airplane, but um, it depends. If I'm feeling kind of anxious or whatever, then I might, and I feel like I need to like leave or in a rush or something, then I'll st sit in the aisle. But if I'm kind of hunkered down and I've like, when I was in university, I used to read all the time on the bus so that I could get some homework done and things like that. Um, then I would sit, and I usually had a distance to go. So then I would sit, um, I would sit uh, kind of by the window in the back of the bus. Because for a while there, we didn't use our car. We just rode the bus. When we were in school, we wanted to save some money. So I can be both. On the airplane, I'm usually, whenever I've been on the airplane, it's for a longer distance. So I will sit. Um, I will sit by the window. Because I don't mind that. So, I guess I'm both. Um, how do you relieve stress? Ah, uh, classic. Um... It depends on what, <laughs> it depends, as it always does, apparently, for me. Um, I like to, well, I think we're all like this. We all like to stitch. Um, and it really does depend on what's going on. Um, if it's the kind of stress that I can... Um, like do something to fix then I just need to do the task whatever it is um, and then it'll go away um, and then I don't have any need to be stressed anymore but if I am if I am uh, anxious because I have I do have anxiety problems then there's really nothing much to do um, except wait it out. And for those of us who've had babies, who've had a child or more, um, it's kind of comp comparable to labor. Um, if, you've, um, if you remember what that was like, which most women have been through it will, um, an anxiety attack for me is much like a labor. Um, you have to just breathe your way through and um, do whatever you can, no matter how small, to make it um, more bearable for you. For me, the best way to get through anxiety if I don't have anyone to help me, because sometimes my husband isn't around or I feel bad and I want to just deal with it myself um, I need to go downstairs to my bed and sit in the bed and usually grab a pillow and put it up to my stomach for some reason and I have to rock back and forth like this in the dark and I have to take deep deep breaths and through my mouth and then I breathe out through my nose until my lungs feel completely empty so in and in and in out 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 that's the best way to deal with it for me and usually after an hour or two or three it starts to subside um, usually when an attack like that happens rescue meds it's too late for rescue meds I do have clonazepam and um, I do have the 
luxury of taking an extra Seroquel uh, if I need to. But often, if I'm going to be in that kind of a state, it's too late. The drugs won't help, so I don't even bother taking them. Uh, what's your favorite childhood TV show? I really liked watching... I watched a lot of MTV, believe it or not. Um, when I was getting into my early teens, when I was about 12 and, and older, I liked to watch music videos a lot. So that's what I did. Because I got that way, it was I got to see, it was like a visual, as well as the popular music of that time. So I got my top 40 that I couldn't buy on CD yet. And I could, you know... Oops. Oh, there it is. Thought I got away, did away with this. Um... So yeah, it was, it was a change of pace from listening to the radio, because I loved the radio back then. I would listen to it all the time. And memorize all the songs and everything else. <laughs> and sometimes I would record the songs off the radio onto a cassette. Do you remember that? I do. I used to do that all the time. Or play a song over the phone to a friend. Just put the receiver up to the up to the radio or up to your record player or CD player, whatever you were listening to. Then you just got a copy of a new album or something. Yeah, I, I, I was one of those kids because I loved collecting music. It was like my favorite, favorite, favorite thing in the whole wide world. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Hmm, what did I want to be? Probably... Like most kids, I wanted to be um, not necessarily a rock star, but a musician of some kind. Hmm. The best, what is the best prank you ever pulled off? Hmm. God, I don't know. I, I'm not really... I was never that kind of a person. I'd say the, the kind of most silly kind of stunt. It was more of a stunt uh, that, that we pulled off. Was, it was me and uh, my sister, actually, <laughs> back in high school. She would have been in, like, the eighth grade... And I was in grade 12. I remember he said that he would, he would um, give my sister a dollar if she rode around on the roof of my car while I drove it. And I was like, well, I don't want to endanger my sister's life. But, you know, what if we just went, you know, around the parking lot with my sister on the roof? And he said, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. So that's what we, that's what we did. <laughs> Let's see, next thing. If you could have dinner with any three people, whom would you choose? Well, now I'm going to assume they mean living or dead, because usually questions like that mean living or dead. So I'm going to assume um, that that's what they mean. And I would choose people like, well, somebody like... Um, Sylvia Plath, um, she died, of course, in 1963 by her own hands, unfortunately. I would also like to meet um, Susanna Kaysen, as far as I know, she's still around. She is the author of the book Girl Interrupted, which was later made into a film of the same name, starring Winona Ryder as Susanna, and it had, um, uh, most notably, probably, Angelina Jolie was another character in the, in the, um, hospital where this all takes place, and that was a great movie. I like the book, but the movie is also quite good. 
Um, I'd like to meet her because she, Susanna Kaysen, ha, has um, borderline personality disorder, just like me. So it'd be cool to talk to somebody else with the same problem. Who's been in the hospital, just like me, for the same problem, just in another another era. Um, and of course, I would probably need to meet. Michael Jackson, Freddie Mercury, um, who else? I know it says three, but I'm doing it my way. Okay, thanks. Hi again. I was in the middle of uh, answering a question when my phone, or er, phone, when my camera ran out of memory. So, anyway, uh, an another person, ah, oh, cat, sorry, there we go. So, another person I would want to have dinner with is probably, uh, Karen, Karen Carpenter, the Karen in my book, uh, she is very important in music, in the musical uh, canon. So, I want, I would want her to come back to life and show us all how it's done. Um, I think the next question was an article of clothing something about clothing. Yes, if you could get back any article of clothing you once wore, what would it be? Uh, hmm. I don't know, I wore a lot of fun vintage clothing when I was growing up and those were cool things. I used to wear uh, army surplus because it was the 90s and that was the cool thing to do. Those were fun. If you could hire any actor to portray you in a movie, who would you choose? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I keep immediately thinking of like Mama Cass, but she was a singer, not an actor. If you could play any instrument, which would you play? I would have liked, I always wanted to learn, I mean, I do know how to play the drums very rudiment, rudimentarily, rudimentarily. <laughs> um, I can do it, um, but I am not a very, I haven't practiced in a long time, so it would take a long time to get it all back and then, you know, improve enough that I could actually play in a group or something. But I liked playing drums a lot. That was just a lot of fun. Um, it's kind of a, an underrated instrument, especially for a woman to play. I don't know why, but that's, that's my preferred instrument. Uh, if you could hear anyone in history give a speech, whom would you hear? Mind finding out from um, a prime minister that we had in the 1960s, known as uh, John Diefenbaker. Um, see, the reason that I, w I wouldn't mind talking with him about this particular circumstance in history is because uh, it affected my family specifically. So um, anyway, I am referring to John Diefenbaker, who was the Prime Minister of Canada in the 60s, um, back when the Avro Arrow project was being um, done. And the reason um, that I would talk to the Prime Minister is because he, um, his government basically um, stopped funding the project 
And for those who don't know, the Avro Arrow was one of our greater accomplishments uh, because it basically was an aircraft that used technology that space shuttles use um, in order to get places very, very quickly. It was an excellent aircraft, and it really did look like a rocket ship. Um, anyway, my great-grandfather was, he worked at um, de Havilland, which was the company that produced the the, the um, Air, Avro Aero, um, well, aircraft. They built all, they built all the components and everything. My great grandfather was a wingman. He used to make wings, and he actually worked on that airplane. And there were only a few produced, but they were amazing. And in his life, when that project was shut down. Um, he, it's a joke in our family that Diefenbaker was a swear word um, in the house because great grandpa uh, was very, very offended because a lot of people lost their jobs um, when that project was shut down. If you could live in one city for the rest of your life, where would you live? Hmm. I don't know, man. Um. London. I've only been to London at Heathrow Airport. That's the only place I've ever been in England. <laughs> so I wouldn't mind um, going to London properly and traveling around and seeing um, all kinds of interesting things as well as learning about um, just learning about some of the true crime and stuff. There's a lot of intriguing uh, stories that come out of London. If you go on Netflix or on YouTube, you can find it as well. There's a show called Murder Maps, and it's all these um, about all of these crimes that happened uh, in London, and it actually kind of shows you on the map of London where all this stuff happened. You know, notorious ones, like really notorious ones, like, um, well, Jack the Ripper was kind of, is kind of mentioned. Um, that being one of the first ones that kind of everybody knows about. Uh, all the way up until, say, uh, Rillington Place back in the 40s and 50s. Um, yeah, there's a lot of interesting crime that happened there. I mean, it's it's sad, don't get me wrong. It's bad, but it's very intriguing indeed. And definitely something to look into if you're into that kind of thing. But that's what I would do. I would like to go on like a crime walk <laughs> and go and see all of these places as they exist today. I know that Rillington Place actually isn't called Rillington Place anymore because it was so, such a notorious address that they had to change the name of the street and demolish the building because there were all those murders in number 10, 10 Rillington Place. When I was, when you were a kid, what did you dress up for as, dress up as for Halloween? Lots of stuff. But growing up in Alberta, by the time Halloween came, it was cold. It was like we often have already had snow. So we couldn't, we didn't have the uh, freedom to wear a whole ver a lot of costuming because it was just too cold. So you couldn't wear, like you couldn't be a... For example, you couldn't be like a, a princess and wear like a, a cute little dress or with a tutu and stuff on it. Like you couldn't do that because you would. It's, it was just too cold. Um, so we had to dress up. Um, we used to get these. Um, they basically like, they reminded me of great big potato sacks, and. Um, we would dress in our winter 
wear. So like our, we'd have to wear, you know, our boots and snow pants and big parkas and mitts and usually something on our heads because your head would just freeze. And we would put these potato sack shaped costumes over top of all of that. And then um, and on those kind of sheaths would be like the illustration of something like a Care Bear or a pumpkin or, you know, whatever. I had one that was a Care Bear. And it was so cold at Halloween. Oh, my living God. I could not believe how cold it would, it, it, it would get. Don't miss that. Do you sleep with your closet doors open or closed? <laughs> That's interesting. Um, our daughter does; she cannot handle closet doors being open. She's really funny like that. She just she can't cope with that. It just drives her nuts. Um, so if I want to tease her or something, I'll like open her closet door just a crack and she'll be like, ah, close the door, close the, close the door. Um, I don't really care. Um, ours is a walk-in closet and it's just a, so it's just a regular door and it's typically um, open. It opens inside the closet though, so it's not like it's hanging open in the middle of the room. It's, um, typically open just because we always are throwing our laundry in the hamper that's in there so it just stays open if you <clears throat> if you could be any cartoon character who would you be <laughs> cartoon character hmm I don't know I feel like I can identify the most with like Meg Griffin on Family Guy, uh, just because she's so awkward and mistreated and stuff, so I can I can identify with that in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, I'll stick with that. I'll stick with. Looking, looking, looking. Do you take the shampoos and conditioner bottles from hotels? No. Never. Just because it's crap and I, I would never use it. Um, have you stolen a street sign before? No. I haven't, actually. Do you sleep with your sheets tucked in or out? Actually, don't usually have a sheet. It's usually <laughs> it's usually just uh, the fitted sheet and quilts on top of the bed. Like we never use the, the top sheet. Always comes off. It always kick, gets kicked off and stuff. So yeah, and if we do have it on there because the sheets are freshly laundered. Um, and put back on. It's usually just kind of loosely, t loosely um, smushed, you know, in between the um, footboard and the mattress. So it's not actually tucked in under under the mattress. So yeah, we're pretty informal like that around here. Not super worried about making the bed and all that. It's probably a bad bad example for our daughter, but there are more important things in life if you ask me. Uh, would you rather be attacked by a big bear or a swarm of bees? Uh, probably a swarm of bees, because I can I could deal with that. Do you always smile for pictures? Yes, because if I don't, I look really grouchy. Even if I'm not, I look really grumpy. 
I have like resting grouch face. So, yes. I tend to smile for pictures. Unless I don't know it's being taken and then you get what you get. But, yeah, typically it's... I do smile just because I did have my teeth fixed. So I might as well, you know, capitalize on that. I wore braces for a long time as a teenager. Luckily, I wore the Dontix. Yeah. Um, have you... Really? Have you peed in the woods? Uh, no. I've never had to. Because I don't like the outdoors. I don't like camping. I don't like... I don't like that. The closest I've ever come to being outside and needing to relieve myself uh, was at the barn where my mom used to board her horse years ago. Um, there, um, it wasn't easy to get to their bathroom that was inside the house, so, because it was a farm, right? So, uh, I ended up needing to go, and I'm a city slicker, so I remember one of the one of the ladies who worked there said, "Well, you we're gonna muck out the uh, the back of the um, like where the horse trailer was on the back of a truck pickup truck," and I was like, "What are you talking about?" And they're like, "Well, it's just shavings in there. Like you can just go." in there and I was like how can I possibly do that I'd have to take off my pants and all of this it's, it's just a ridiculous mess and they're like no you don't and I was like yeah I do how else am I gonna go and they said well and this might be too much information but they they said just lower your uh, pants and underwear and then stick your, stick your butt out behind you and bend over and that'll angle it so that you hit the shavings and not your clothes or your legs and I was like what? because <laughs> again, you know city slicker, right? And they're like, well that's the way you do it and we're gonna, we're gonna be shoveling it out anyway so you know, whatever and I was like well, I'm not concerned about the, you know, the urine so much as I'm concerned about soiling my clothes. And they're like, nah, you won't. Just make sure you bend over and kind of throw your hips out behind you. You'll be fine. And they laughed at me. They were like, you're such a city slicker. And I was like, yeah, I am. <laughs> I've never, uh, never claimed I wasn't. And, uh, anyway, it does work. So, if you're a woman and you need to just quickly, you know, urinate in the wild, <laughs> but you're dressed, uh, go for it. That's, that's what you do. You kind of just put your hips out behind you. You don't, th it doesn't seem like it will work, but it actually does. I'm sure you learned something today. <laughs> uh, what size is your bed? Uh, right now I have a queen size bed, but we will be upsizing to a king because Cody and I are getting older and we like more, a little more space. We've had the same bed that we have. We've had it for 15 years. Um... What was the best concert you ever attended? Oh boy. Um, I actually am not a real seasoned concert goer, interestingly, considering how much I like music. Um, I've been to only a few. I've been to Elton John, and then I saw Heart. And then my mom took us, my sister and me, to see Chicago. 
um, the band, not the musical. Uh, and that was those those were good shows. They were all really good shows. I would say Elton John was probably the most like high profile person I've ever seen perform. Uh, let's see. What is your song of the week? Speaking of music, song of the week? Um, I guess song that I'm listening to the most, maybe, on my playlist. Yeah. It's called Record, and it's this. there's a really good song on it that always gets caught in my head, and it's called Smoke, and it's really, really good. It's all about her, like, family history and her, like, attachment to living in London, because, and she talks about kind of, I guess, hearkening back to the Industrial Revolution when her family would have moved from a small village to the Roland Smoke. The Roland Smoke. In London. To work in, like, one of the factories. It's a good song. You should uh, give that a listen. The whole record is good. The whole album is good. But that that's my particularly favorite song from it. Mm. Do I still watch cartoons? Yep, once in a while. 28. When was the last time you wrote a letter to someone on paper? Mm. Long enough ago that I, I would like to forget. Um, <laughs> let's see... I, in those days, when I had my first boyfriend, it was pre-Windows 95, so <laughs> it was pre-internet uh, browser stuff, so yeah, we had to write letters on paper, wrote letters, because I lived far enough away that we couldn't really talk much on the phone because that was really expensive in those days um, so probably um, 1997 I think would have been kind of around that the last time uh, how many languages can you speak I can speak English French Italian and some Spanish so, three-ish. Do you believe in ghosts? Um, do I believe in ghosts? Um, not really, I don't think. It'd be nice if there were spirits. That would be cool, but I don't really know if I believe it, to be quite honest. The logic, you know... The logical, critical thinker in me, you know, just doesn't like to believe in something that's not empirical. So, yeah. Mm. What was your first concert? Elton John? I think. I think Elton was the first concert I went to. Cheetos or Fritos? Now, living in Canada... We do have Cheetos, but I don't think we have Fritos. I'd have to say Cheetos. Hmm. Can you curl your tongue? Yes. Yes, I can. Hmm. Ever want a spelling bee? Yes. Own a record player? Yes. I still have record players. Who would like who would you like to see in concert? Mm. Oh, I don't know. Uh I would uh, Let's see. I would go and I would watch um Richard Carpenter play in uh in concert. He's working on a new album right now. So that's exciting. I don't know if he's going to tour. He doesn't usually tour really anymore. He's kind of retired. 
but he is working on a new studio album, so that's... That'll work. That works for me. But I would, I would definitely go and watch him play, because he's amazing. He's very, very, very gifted. Um... Hmm, what now? Sugar cookies or snickerdoodles? Sugar cookies. I don't like snickerdoodles, like, at all. Can you swim well? Relatively. I just haven't had to in a long time, or haven't in a long time. But I, I can, yes. Uh, are you patient? Well, I think I'm like most people. I'm patient with some things and really not patient with other things. But as a rule, probably average. I don't think I'm super patient. But I'm not super impatient either, I don't think. I certainly used to be. But I don't think I'm as bad anymore. I hope I hope not anyway. Um DJ or a band at a wedding? Uh, we had a DJ. That was lots and lots of fun for our wedding. It was fu It's fun because that way you can listen to, like, songs that tend to get listened to a lot at weddings. At least in our family. I don't know if it's like that for other families. Probably. Where when you're all together, it's fun to listen to certain songs for whatever reasons. Nostalgic ones, usually. Uh, plus, for us, my mom likes to try. She thinks that she can do this all the time. She thinks she can stump the DJ on, you know, when she gives a request for a particular song. She thinks that, oh, he'll never, he or she will never have this one in their, you know, collection of songs or whatever. I'm like, yes, they will. But she asks for songs that she thinks are obscure, but they're not really, at least not in my opinion. Like, songs by groups like Level 42 and things like that. I'm like, a DJ sh should know who that is. And, you know, who cares if they don't? But, but I'm pretty confident they do, because they're really good, you know dance, kind of Euro dance, kind of band from the 80s, you know? I don't know if it's technically Euro dance, but certainly British pop anyway, for sure. <sighs> These skeins go on forever, it feels like. Jeez. Um, I'm getting to the end. Ever won a contest? Have I ever won a contest? I don't remember. Probably, but I don't remember. Do you have kids? Yes, one. Do I want kids? Well, I already have one, so that's good enough for me. <laughs> I'm not one to... Uh, be greedy. Plus, I can't. I had a hysterectomy, so I can't even have any more if I felt like it. Which I don't. Never did. Going through the whole process once is enough. Well, that was the end of the tag. I'm still bobbinating. But all I have left is 310 and white after this blue. And then I will be done for this project. So, thank you guys for listening. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much. And thank you for subscribing, all you new subscribers out there. Uh, remember, if you want to see this channel grow and thrive, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.